Sheikh Mohammed Lawa is going to be telling us the bitter truth about Israel. What nobody told you and I about Israel. So let's check it out. And you begin not to understand. The reconstruction era was during the Balfour Declaration in the early 40s when the Jewish had no place to go. So the Balfour Declaration gave them the latitude. They draw, they cut off part of Palestine for them to live there when no nation was prepared to accept them. No nation on the face of the earth was prepared to accept them. But their brethren, their cousins, Ishmael, Ismail, and Ishaq, they were cousins, they were brothers. So the children of them twain became cousins. They said, well, subhanAllah, come, come, take this part. They allowed them, and they lived there. And guess what? And they started inching, 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 and today, look at it. The Jewish people, they don't have a home. They are the only nation on the face of the earth that have no abode. They don't have a place to call their own. Show me where, how, history, bring it. Let's look at it. They don't have. When Abraham left, Ur of Chaldea, in the, by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because his community worship whatever they worship. So Allah took him from that part and he came to Iraq, Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq. And that's where he lived. And he moved from place to place as Allah showed him. So he began to have children. Isaac, eventually Jacob came in. Eventually the 12th tribe of Israel from Jacob. They don't have a nation to call their own like you have a nation. This is where my great great grandfather was born. This is my root. The Israelites don't have a nation. So from the 12 tribes of Israel, one of them became so powerful, and that is Yusuf alayhi salam. Somehow we know the story. His own brethren through jealousy, they tried to destroy him, but somehow he ended up in Egypt. You know the story. So he became a minister. And so he asked for his mother and father and brethren, all of you, come, I'm a minister here. You have the luxury of staying in uh, Egypt. See, they don't have a place. So Joseph gave them, you know, a land called Goshen. Goshen is part of uh, Egypt where they live and they begin to have children. Eventually, the community of the Egyptian sort of not liking them because of their behavior. Allah sent Moses to take them, you know, to let them cross the river. And hopefully if they behave right, Allah will give them the land of honey and milk. So they cross over. Look at what they did to Moses. They've seen a lot of miracle upon miracle, but yet they, they were slagging behind. Moses went to bring the Ten Commandments. By the time he came, they made a calf. They worshiped that calf. They said, man, we're tired of all this thing that is happening. We would like for you, Moses, take us back to Egypt. Because then, after all, we would eat the leftover of our master. It's even better for us than to live in the jungle. We want manna. Allah sent manna and salwa. They enjoy that. Still, they never thank Allah enough. So Moses was saying in the wilderness, because of your unbelief, you stiff-necked, you arrogant, how long shall you see the damnation of God Almighty through your behavior? So they moved from oasis to oasis, from landmark to the landmark. So they already the Israelites, they don't have a nation to call their own. They never had a nation. So Palestine was given to them. And look at what is happening today. Look at what is happening today. It's so very sad. The world has turned its face away from what is happening. So I believe eventually it's going to be a time that justice will be saved. Whatever Israel is doing, they are digging a hole for themselves to fall in. Israel is creating, you know, a good time for herself. Whatever she's doing right now, the world is seeing. It is the way of Allah. 
Let her do whatever she want to do. She's enjoying doing it, but there's going to be a time that the time is up. The cup is full. And that will be too late. It's coming. And it's coming. And it will come. Reason, logic, prove that something has to give. Whatever is happening in this world, there's got to be a time that someone will redress this information, that this thing that is going on. You don't want to listen about that kind of you know, mis misconception. So Islam is not a terrorist nation. We are fighting for what is our own. I mean, I'm not going to let you come to my house and take whatever you want to take in my house. I'm going to have to fight back at least, even if I'm going to be throwing stone. I'm going to be doing that, and that is exactly what the children of Palestine are doing today. They have to fight their aggression. But if they do something, they say, oh, they're terrorists. Who is the terrorist? Man, we have to define the word terrorist. Who did the First World War? Who made those heavy guns and killed millions and millions of people? Who did that? Is it the Muslim did that? Or the Western people who created the propaganda did that? Who fought Second World War? Hitler. Who did that? Who went to Japan and dropped bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Wiped up the whole system, the whole community wiped up. Right now as I'm speaking, if you go to Nagasaki and Hiroshima, some part of that community does not grow food because the chemical wastes have gone deep into the earth that buy it from you know, producing anything. Who does that? Who, you want me to start counting? Thousands of who did this, who did that? Who is creating all this arm? Who is killing? And are you calling me a terrorist? Who killed the Indian Americans? Up to now, the Indians are still crying. Wholesale slaughter. Who did that? That is terrorism. Who came to Africa and loaded our ancestors? in the boat when they die they throw it to the shark who did that that is terrorism who is striking the world right now how many guns have we made mm. what gun mm. so if you call me a terrorist <laughs> i don't know if you understand what the word terrorist is mm. now this is making sense come to think of it if you look at what happened to the israelites in the bible in the Quran, compared to what's going on now, you understand that. <sighs> hey, the, 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 you will know that the book is a living book. Quran, Bible is is really the word of God because see the struggles that are happening. I love the way the man spoke out. He let on let us understand how it all happened who the Israelites were in the Quran and what is happening now in this present time and who started the all, you know, back and forth, you know, it's just, wow, like, wow, that was really beautiful to watch, like, the fact that he was able to convince us why Palestinians are the innocent one since they're not the terrorist people and let us understand what is going on when you relate it to what has happened in the Quran are touching guys it's beautiful to watch at the same time it's sad to actually witness what's going on presently between these two countries it's so sad so so sad wow beautiful one from from the scholar that was beautiful thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one bye